Whoa, is this what I think is? Is this the 360S9? Wow, I can't believe it. it's in my hands. So thanks so much for sending me out this unit in exchange for review. So thanks so much. Now, the 360S9 is the latest model from 360 lineup. And I've had personal experience with the 360 company. So this is the original 360 that they launched. It's been a very strong performer. What I liked about the 360 was the fact that it had 10 different floor plans you could save with this and you could choose the different types of floor plans or aka maps so it made the user experience really easy especially for a multi-level house and this guy's been going very strong haven't had any issues so I really like the original 360 S6 and we'll see if this 360 S9 can hold up to its name. Before we begin, make sure you like this video. It really does help out with the video. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Nathan. This is Royal Masters. We do a lot of head-to-head -head challenges with robot vacuums. We do unboxings. We do reviews. All type of cool challenges with these cool cleaning products. Okay, so grab some popcorn. Grab a drink because this is a long, in-depth review video of the 360 S9. Oh, hey, Nathan. How's it going? This is my evil twin. So yes, this is the original 360S1 with a projector, but now 360S9 came out with the new advanced one. Where is it at? Hold on. Oh hey 360, how's it going buddy? The S1, you want to get out of the way because I'm supposed to showcase the 360S9 in this video. Thank you 360S1, bye. Okay, I was just kidding there. That model did come from 360, that was from Kiku, but here's the 360S9. So I'll try to make this video interesting by putting in the challenges throughout the entire video. So if there's something you want to see, just feel free to skip through the video to find what you like to see. I'll cover the app, integration, the app pairing process, the unboxing, all that fun jazz. So the 360S9 might be a viable competitor to the other manufacturers. Let's see what this is all about. So when I do a comprehensive review video like this, I try to learn everything I can about the product. Uh, I try to learn about the specs, their limitations, their pros, their cons. Also, I try to research the company, see how long they've been around. So for this particular model, one thing that stood out is the new anti entanglement system yes this robot vacuum claims to be able to untangle itself from different types of long cords like power cables it also can entangle itself from shoestrings and in this snail entangle itself from kite string so another robot vacuum that i remember that had really good anti entanglement system was the roombas like the roomba i7 or the roomba s9 so they use a dual extractor bar design so with that system they were able to stop the extractor bars and kind of wiggle its way free now with this system it's a little bit harder because this is a combo style brush so it has bristles and silicone so it's more likely for the string to get wrapped around these brushes easier so we'll see how well the 360 s9 can get itself free and make sure you stay towards the end of the video because I will show other scenarios of the 360S9 tackling shoestrings and other obstacles and challenges. Alright, so it looks like the 360 had no problem with this challenge, was able to free itself from the short string and also from the long string. And this short string down below shouldn't be an issue as well. So I had the robot set to twice, so it does a long pattern and a short pattern. Also the robot vacuum was on its max power mode, so we'll see how many beads it picked up. I was surprised how well the robot vacuum kept track of where it needs to clean and where it should clean. Also, the ability to untangle itself was quite impressive. Also, dealing with that lip off to your left. Okay, let's keep on going. If you worry about where to place the docking station in your household, maybe you have a lot of furniture or a lot of obstacles, I wouldn't worry too much. You could actually put these docking stations behind a bed or you could actually put it in a closet. I actually had it in my kitchen and there's a bunch of obstacles in front of the charger station and the robot vacuum had no problem maneuvering around the chair legs and going to its docking station. So in this video, we'll do the unboxing, we'll do a app overview app pairing process and we'll also check out some of the features of the 360 s9 all right let's go ahead and uh, get it unboxed all right so here's the box of the 360 s9 it's kind of a plain looking box nothing too colorful i do wish it was a colorful box because i'm a big believer of eye catchy boxes but i guess the whole point of a box is to protect the product not to really showcase the product one two three Whoa, what is this guys? Here, let's spin you guys around here. Wow, this is a really nice presentation. Looks like we got an accessory box over here. You guys see what's inside here? I 
so here's the accessory box. Looks like we have our pouch brick. Very nice. And there's the universal adapter. So whatever country you live in, you should be able to use this robot. You don't have to buy any additional accessories or power converters. Awesome job. Some packaging. Right, so here's our mopping bracket. Holds the washable mopping pad. And it just slides right off and throw this in your wash and dryer when you're done using it. And it comes with an extra washable mopping pad. Nice feature. Whoa, is this crazy? A robot vacuum on my counter? I'm going crazy here. Alright, so we got the mopping pad. This is just a regular mopping bracket. And all you have to do is take your clean washable mopping pad, slide it on this groove here. Just like that. It's secured on by Velcro. And just spin this guy around. And it should just clip on right here. I'm switching to mopping mode. Next, to get the water reservoir filled up, open up this black lid here. That's a little 200 milliliter water tank. Okay, don't use dirty coffee creamer. It's not a good idea. No chemicals, just warm or cold water. All right, so I got my water reservoir filled up. Just slide in the robot. Let's get mopping. Okay, so one tip if you're using the mopping module, make sure you place the charger on a hard surface. So when the robot's done, it will have an easy time going back to the stocking station with the mopping module. Also, you notice the cleaning pattern is very similar to the vacuuming pattern. Yes, it's the exact same. Whoa, 360 S9, you already done? Wow, that's amazing. You mop my uh, hardwood floors and my carpet. I'm just buying for it. All right, so yes, you can put a no mopping zone right there. So I highly recommend that, or you can end up with soggy carpets. Okay, so one unique feature to remove the mopping plate, it's just a single one-handed job. Yep, there you go. Water tank has been removed. I'm exiting the mopping mode. Ah, looks... Oh no, there is some dirt debris, but I did previously vacuum these floors and mop these floors. So these are designed for light mopping tasks. Okay, let's keep on moving. Here's the charging dock. It's very large. I really like the clean look. It's a little large, but the reason why it's so large is it does allow you to wrap the cable around in the back to give a nice clean setup. Also, there's some weight to it, so the charger is not going to move around on a slick surface. Lastly, I like the fact that it has a large wide charging contact, so if the robot is slightly misaligned, it will still continue charging. I like some other ones that use kind of like a traditional pins down below. It makes it a little bit harder for the robot to find a stocking station. It may have to try a few times. But I do like the design of the 360 S9. Okay, so that was everything in that box. Okay, so last thing we have is the handy little remote control. Instructions for the remote control, very handy. And on the back tells you how to install the little button cell battery. They're fairly cheap on Amazon. You can get like a pack of six for like two or three bucks. Nice. Check that out. That's a really cool, clean looking remote. Kind of looks like the Apple TV remote with that circular dial pad. But up top is the play pause in the center there. That's your directional control panel. You also have the spot clean function. You can tell the robot to go dark. And lastly, you can change the suction power. This robot goes up to 2200 pascals and you got three levels of suction power. Very nice. So on the back is where you exchange the coin battery. Just take the coin battery and put it in the slot, rotate it, and the cover should come off. So fairly easy battery installation. Nice. So that's everything in that box. So we have the top box. Uh, this is really nice. Um, here's the instruction manual. Let's go ahead and quickly look at that. And as you know, I do read the instruction manuals. You can see in my videos, I take pride in reading these instruction manuals. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Happy? Yes, I'm super happy. Thanks so much. Can't you see? Okay, so if you want to give feedback, you can uh, scan a QR code. Kind of nice feature. But look at this, guys. You can rotate the manual. See? Upright. Upright, upright. Hmm. 
I do like that they give a dedicated booklet to install the app and to pair up the robot. Very nice touch. It's very thorough, lots of information. But I will showcase how to pair this in this video. So just hold on a second. Here's the quick user guide. Something that I recommend reading if you just want to get the robot quickly going. And lastly, you've got the thick booklet in multiple languages. So, make sure you thoroughly read this. Spend hours and hours reading this booklet. Lots and lots of information. Alright, let's keep on going. Alright, so here's another accessory box. And it actually tells you what's inside. So this is all the different types of power prongs. We got the US prong, we got the European prong, and we have a Asian prong. But I could be wrong, I could be backwards. I don't know my prong type, sorry. But for here in the USA, all you have to do is just take the correct prong and just slide it in. And you're good to go. Super, super simple. Awesome job, very nice touch that you can use this overseas, anywhere in the world. Sweet! Okay, so that's everything in that little top box. Whoa, what is this guys? Is this the new robot? As always, I get a cool little hat, but this hat's a little small. Yeah, it's not working out for me, I'm sorry. Okay, let's check out the robot. And that should be everything in this box. We have a bag of robots. I hope I don't drop the stain. Be super careful unwrapping your robot, you don't want to damage it. Alright, so here's the 360S stand. I do like the fact that they give you quick instructions on all the functions of the buttons. Also, if you take your smartphone and scan the QR code, it will quickly download the app for you so it makes app pairing very simple and if you have any problems check out my video or you can check out that little app pairing guide that they give you. Okay so up top here is the lot of navigation. I call it the knobby dome thing because hear that it's clickable so when there's low hanging furniture the robot knows not to bump its little head thing. Alright so let's quickly spin around the robot. Up right here is the sonar sensor. What's great about sonar is it's not affected by black objects or clear objects like infrared sensors so it could detect a wide range of obstacles. And what's great about Sonar is if you're worried about privacy, like on a camera system, well, Sonar won't display any images or live video feeds. So that's one nice feature. All right, let's see how well the Sonar sensor works. Well, it looks like the 360S9 is not a big fan of unicorns. Push off that one away. And it also pushed away sparkles like it was nothing. Oh, poor sparkles. Anyways, make sure you smash that like button. Yep, you see that pillow down there? Big old thumbs up really helps out this video. We'll see how quickly the 360S9 realizes that this is a dead end and has to take an alternate route. So the navigation algorithms are very similar across most robot vacuums. So with the 360S9, quickly realize that this path is blocked, so there's an alternate path through my dining room area. As the robot's going around, it'll actually program in its map in real time where these objects are, so if it ever does the same path again, we'll actually avoid this area next time, so it creates a more efficient route. Most modern well, vacuums have the capability of performing this task, creating an alternate route. So one thing I do off camera is called reliability. So what I do is I have the robot vacuum go to the same location over and over multiple times, and I see how well the map holds up. So if the robot vacuum has poor map memory management, the map will over time get obscured, or you may see a rotation of the map. Unfortunately, the first Roblox S5 experienced that, and the map over time degraded, so it would require a new map. But thankfully, the 360S9's map stayed rock solid. So the next time I ran the 360S9, it actually remembered its route, and it avoided that hallway and went straight to the bedroom. Okay, so the route was about the same, except it took the second chair leg over the first one, but it was able to get between both chair legs. Okay, so here's the next challenge. This wooden chair leg, there's actually no space between either side of the robot. So in theory, the robot vacuum shouldn't be able to get through this chair leg. But I wanted to test how aggressive the robot vacuum is. Does it give up easily or does it try to push its way through? 
I was actually surprised how well the 360 S9 did. It doesn't like to give up easily and it kept trying and trying to push its way through the chair leg. So that's something to consider when buying a robot vacuum. And now look at this. Yes, the wife came home unexpected so hopefully she's not too mad at me. Well, I better buy some flowers or chocolates or something. Okay, so it looks like the 360 S9 was able to push through and you can see it create an alternate path. I don't know if this is cheating or not. Alright, let's go ahead and rotate the robot to the left here or to your right. I don't know which orientation. But we've got the side infrared sensor. So as it's going along the wall, helps with that single side brush to get all the dirt and debris from your baseboards. Now in the back here is the nice air vent and there's also a speaker grill. You also have the charging contacts in the rear. And on the other side, there's nothing. But you do have these little plastic rubber protectors on either side. Helps prevent the bumper from moving during shipment. All right, let's open up the flappy lid here. Whoa, this is awesome. Well, 360 thought of everything. Yes, you got a little activity kit for your kids or for yourself. And yes, you can put a little stickers on your robot and give it more of a personality. Hey, how's it going? My name's Mr. 360S9. Okay, check it out guys. You got that 200 milliliter water tank right here and you got the larger 420 milliliter dust bin right there. So it's a very unique design. Both of them are top loading, so it makes it really easy interchanging out the dust bins or water tank. So all you do is just lift up the little handle. Very convenient. And there's a 200 milliliter water tank and it's electronically controlled. You get three water levels. And you put it back in, real simple. If I can put it in the right direction. Simple. Here's the dustbin. Very, very nice. I like it's clear so you can quickly see how much dirt and debris is in your dustbin. And check out this. This is a washable HIPAA filter. 360 gave me a little cleaning tool for my hair. Yeah, sometimes I have a bad hair day and they make sure I'm covered. Yeah, see, look, I can groom myself live on camera. Do I look pretty? And I have a little cutting tool so I can do my nails as well. I'm just kidding. This is actually for the extractor bar. So if you have hair wrapped around, you can take that cutting tool and brush out the hair. Also, you can wipe down your robot. Nice touch. There you go. 420 milliliters worth of dirt. So, down here is the buttons. You also have the reset button. Just take a pen to reset the robot. You also have a Wi-Fi indicator. And under this flap is a special you see that little port that actually allows 360 to update the firmware on their end and it's also like a communication port so very very nice so that's everything inside the robot let's take a quick look underneath the robot you got the single side brush very long this is a bristle type not silicone found like the roblox but we'll see how well this bristle design holds up you got your front wheel caster up front here four clip sensors you got your combo style extractor bar i'll go ahead and uh, show that right now just rip off this little plastic plate. Alright, so here's a comparison of the Roblox and the 360 S9 extractor bars. They're the exact same size. Also, they're combination style. So they got the bristles and silicone to help with the dirt and debris. Cool. Alright, so installing the extractor bar is fairly easy. Just line it up with the correct side. And put the cover back on. Cool. Adjust the wheels. And they're movable, so it allows it to adjust over different types of terrain and thresholds. And it looks like they got some good traction. So we'll see how well it does over different types of carpets and thresholds. Let's go ahead and get this guy charged up, and we'll see how well the 360 S9 does. Why am I spinning my robot? I don't know. Let's get going. Okay, let's go and uh, check out the driveway of the dustbin. So keep in mind, I did run this robot a few times prior to this testing. So it kind of helps break in the filters and extract bars. So I'm not using a brand new robot vacuum, just freshly out of the box. So if we compare the dustbin size to other robot vacuum models, a little bit on the small side, around 420 milliliters, and it weighs about 5.550 ounces dry weight. For my cleanup challenges, I tried to do a mixture of debris from plastic bees to gummy bears to small pieces of candy. Also, I do some cereal and powder to help do a variety of dirt and debris. So the robot's set to its max power mode at 2200 pascals, and it has the airflow around 24 CFM. Lastly, I have the robot set to clean this area twice. So someone commented I should add a fancy spec sheet, so here it is. So feel free to pause the video to read the spec sheet. 
When choosing a robot vacuum, there's a lot of things to consider. How big is your floor plan? Do you have multiple levels? Do you have pets? Do you have a lot of furniture and obstacles? Do you have pets that shed long dog hair? So if you said yes to any of these things, like if you have a really large house, I would recommend a small lighter based robot vacuum. But unfortunately, not all lighter based robot vacuums are created equally. So with the 360 S9, I did find that the navigation is up there with the Roblox. You can see it can handle these types of furniture, kind of navigates around the chair legs. Also, the long side brush does a really good job clearing the debris away from your baseboards and other objects. And like the Roblox, the side brush is speed sensitive, so it goes along the baseboard. There's a dedicated wall sensor which will speed up the side brush to help kick away the dirt and debris from the baseboards. And then in the open area, the side brush slows down so it doesn't scatter the debris too much. Well, did you notice that the 360 S9 changed its clean pattern? Yes, now it's going the other direction, which is a great feature. This is something I don't find on many well, vacuums. Okay, so let's talk about all the features I can list on the top of my head. So this guy has no bopping zones, keep out zones, you have area select, you have room select, you also have room sequencing, so the robot can go to the rooms you selected first. You also have the ability to do two cleanup jobs. You have the ability to have the robot clean the area twice with a crisscross pattern. You also have three water levels, you have four power settings. The battery life runs up to 180 minutes, and finally you have the auto recharge and resume features. Wow, that's a handful. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how much the dustbin weighs. And we're looking at 8.815 ounces, so it did a 93%. Not too bad. If you don't like the way the robot cleaned out the first time, you can also have the robot go back out and uh, clean again. But looks like this dustbin was quite full, so it could have um, not been able to pick up all the dirt and debris since the dustbin was so full. But the robot itself did a fairly good job picking up the majority of the dirt and debris. Let's go ahead and check out the app pan process. Okay, so I got my uh, smartphone. We're going to pair up the 360 S9 to my smartphone. It uses the 360 smart app um you can search it in the google play store or if you have an iphone you can do it the apple app store but there's also a qr code right here which you can scan so let me demonstrate that really quick just line it up and now there should be a url just go ahead and uh, open the link and this will take me directly to the 360 smart app try to search through a dozen different apps to find the correct app it goes right to you so once you have the correct app, all you do is just select download and now you should be able to see the APK file for Android. And we'll go ahead and install it. And we'll get it opened up. And we'll agree to privacy. And now we can log in. So here, just go ahead and put in all your information if you haven't created an account. But since I had the original S6, I should have an account already. Select that accept icon down below and sign up. Okay, so now we're on the main home screen of the 360 Spot app. So to add a new robot, you can click on the icon or the little plus icon. Let's go and uh, see what happens. Now you see a whole list of robots. Let's go down and find ours at the bottom, the S9. Next, we have to hold down the power button for about 5 to 10 seconds. Alright, you see this little blue indicator? Now the robot's gonna boot up. The robot has been switched on. Alright, go to the next step. Now we're gonna open up the top cover. And we're gonna hold down the power button and home button for about 3 seconds. And we should see a blinking fast Wi-Fi indicator. Okay, blue light's flashing quickly, so now it's ready to connect to our network. Okay, now we have to select our Wi-Fi network. Keep in mind that it only accepts 2.4 gigahertz. And just put in your Wi-Fi password. Now it's going to go ahead and initialize, and sometimes there's a new firmware update, and that takes maybe 5 to up to an hour. So what I recommend is 
Let the robot do its thing. Keep your smartphone near the robot so it can have easy access to the pairing process and go ahead and take a break. Okay, so iPhone's a little different. Um, so when you click the next step, it doesn't automatically do the pairing process. You actually have to jump to your Wi-Fi page and select the robot's network. Right, I'll be right back. Well, look at all these robots, S6 Max V, the Vioma V2, and now we got the 360 S9. All right, so let's go ahead and start the mapping process on the 360 S9 so it can map my entire house. You may notice that there's a map already on the robot, but I didn't actually tell the app to save the map. So what's going to happen is when I press clean, the robot will just resume a new map and create a new map for me. So it's very user friendly. I don't have to clear the map by hand. It just does it automatically until I actually save the map. Okay, so in order to start the mapping process, I can press the clean button on the robot or I can actually start on the app. Or let's do something more interesting. You can use Alexa or Google to start the robot. Ah, that's kind of boring. What about the include remote? Yes, you can use that as well. Well, that's even more boring. Did you guys hear that? Yes, I have speakers on my smart glasses. Check it out guys, I have Alexa on my glasses. I'm going to show you this right now. Alexa, turn on my 360S9. Hey, come back. What are you doing with my juice box? Alexa, turn off my 360S9. Thank you, 360S9. Good robot. If you just got the robot out of the box, you should have a blank map on the screen. But if you have used the robot a bit, you should see a map already previously created. Now, what's nice about the 360S9 is it will spin in a 360 degree circle to try to get its bearing. And if it doesn't, figure out what map it's on, it will actually create a new map and automatically update its map. I have used several different types of robot vacuum navigation systems, whether it be gyro systems being the simplest, camera-based systems, or here, LiDAR sensors. So the benefit of LiDAR sensors is they update the maps in real time, so it only takes one go around or a cleanup to create an entire floor plan. And you can see that the map updated to a new floor plan. So once the robot's completed the map, I do recommend that you edit the map. So with the editing feature, you can create rooms, name the rooms. You also have area select, you can create keepout zones. So there's a lot of customization within the map. Now, once the map's been created and customized, just press the little heart icon and it'll allow you to save up to 10 different maps. So a lot of these well, vacuums start with the perimeter seat first and then they fill in that perimeter with a back and forth cleaning pattern. And like the Roblox, they actually just do a section of the room first and then they fill in that section and then they go on to the next section until they create the entire floor plan. Don't worry, once the robot learns your floor plan, it will actually create a very effective cleaning pattern. Okay, so I got the robot all paired up with my smartphone. I'm using a Galaxy Note 9 for this demonstration. So let's go over all the app features that this 360S9 has to offer. Let's start with the application itself. This is the 360 robot application. So just go ahead and jump into it. And now if you have multiple 360 products, you should see a list, but I only have one for this demonstration. So let's go ahead and click on the icon. Now there's a lot of information on the main home screen. Up top is your name of the robot. And you have three icons, room, house, and area. This allows you to do a room cleaning or you can do a whole house cleaning or you have the ability just to do area cleaning. And within these sections, you have a lot of customizations. So let's start with the room cleaning. Now you see this colorful map. Each of the colors represent the entire room of my floor plan. So I have like master bedroom, my daughter's bedroom, I have the kitchen, the living room, etc, etc. Of course, you can rename these rooms if you like. Now off to your left here is three toggles. You have the smart cleaning. So like the Roblox, you have a cleaning order, which you can have the robot clean uh, which rooms you want it to do first, or you just do smart clean, which allows the robot to choose which is the best way to get to the rooms. Um, very nice feature, a lot of customization there. You also have the water levels. So what's nice about the water levels is there's three of them. So if you have tiles, you can do low water. If you have dedicated hardwood floors, you can do low water. But if you have like a muddy room, you can bump up the water level to uh, help remove the dirt and grime. Okay, so you also have the Vacuuming modes. This is something I haven't seen in a lot of uh, vacuums. So you can do vacuum and mopping that most 
well, vacuums can do, but you can also do vacuuming only, which you can remove the mopping pad, or you can do just do mopping only, which is a nice feature if you don't want to run the vacuum motor. Maybe you have a wet spill, well, that's a nice feature. Okay, so off to your right is another option you can actually fully customize to each of your rooms. So for example, let's say the master bedroom, since I have high profile carpet, I can do powerful mode to help get the dirt grab. Now for like maybe my kitchen, which is all hardwood floors, I can change it to just low powerful mode. And also I can tell it to not mop my bedroom. So there's a lot of customization within each uh, room. Okay, let's go to house. So this is basically allows the robot to clean your entire floor plan. Again, if you have the room select option enabled, it will do the rooms in sequence. Very nice feature. But you also have the ability to save the map. So let me go and show you that. So when I save the map, there's actually going to be a heart icon, which I go to select map up top here. And it just takes a few minutes to load up the map, depending on how bogged down the server is. Now you can see I have a couple of save maps, and down below are my not save maps. So what this does is up to 10 different maps, the robot will continue saving them until it gets to the oldest one. And if it's the 11th, it will actually replace that one. Now if you have a heart saved, it will actually keep these maps regardless if you have a new map uh, being created. So a very nice feature. And of course, you can name your floor plans, main floor plan, basement, upper level. Alright, let's jump back into the main menu. Now down below is a uh, different kind of like history or statistics. So you get your feet squared, you can change this to meter squared. You also have how long the robot's been running. And lastly, the estimated feet squared, which is pretty accurate because I have couches, I have furniture that the robot can't get to. My area is about 2,600 square feet. Okay, so you have a block off area which allows you to block off the area if you don't want the robot to get to your pet bowls. You also have a no mopping zone which is highlighted blue. So if the robot has mopping or vacuum and mopping, the robot won't enter those zones. Okay, so down below is your uh, quick toggles. So you have to recharge so the robot can go back to the stocking station. You have to sweep so the robot will start sweeping. You also have four vacuuming modes, quiet, standard, powerful, and max mode. Even at max mode, the robot's pretty quiet, around 59 decibels. Also, here's your tools. So I do like to lay out this uh, menu system. Also, some of the menu icons can be accessed from the main home screen, like their multi-story management. All right, let's go to to intelligent zoning. This is where you can edit your map, you can name your rooms, you can also merge the areas, you can split the areas, and you can also uh, refresh the map. So for example, if I clicked on two areas, I can merge those areas into one, or if I wanted to just split one room, I have the option as well by drawing a red line. Very nice feature, works very well. I think it works a little bit better than uh, the Roborock, it was real reliable and there was no issues there. Alright, let's go and uh, keep going. Okay, so we're in the scheduling feature, so we just press on a plus icon. So like most scheduling apps, you can just tell the time you want the robot to go out. You also have the ability to do vacuuming and mopping, or mopping only. Something I haven't seen on most robot vacuums. Also, you can tell it to clean once, you can do daily, you can do a weekend, weekday, or you can customize how often you want the robot to go. So here's something very interesting. Like with most robot vacuums, you can do house or room cleaning, but one thing you can do with the 360 S9 is the area clean as well. So maybe after 10 a.m. after your dogs eat, you can just have it clean around your dog bowls. Well, that's an option. Very, very clever. All right, let's go ahead and jump back. Now you have history. So here's all the cleaning logs I've done with the 360 S9. All right, so I had the S9 go out and map out my house, and it did a really good job at 107 minutes. A little bit quicker than most who are back into a mapping. Also, it was able to clean 796 square feet. Keep in mind some of these areas the robot wasn't able to get to, like the furniture and couches. Also, one nice feature is even on its low power setting, it was able to pick up a lot of the dirt and debris. So I was quite impressed with the cleaning performance. Okay, so you also have the reset map. So if you don't like the map, you can always clear out the map. You can rotate the map. That's actually a really nice feature. Something that I haven't seen, you can physically rotate the map to the orientation you like. Okay, so here's the different voice packages. So let's go ahead and have the robot speak Chinese. Okay, I have no clue what that lady said. Alright, let's jump back into it. You got RC mode, so a very nice feature. You can control the what the control is on. 
Thanks for interrupting me. So, I can move it. And down at the bottom, you can tell it to go back to the docking station or you can have it sweep the entire area. Nice little convenient feature. The remote control is off. Shh, don't interrupt me. Alright, so you can update your firmware. So right now I'm on my latest firmware, 1.8.2.2363. Okay, so we got positioning. I'm here. And you also have maintenance. So nice about these well, vacuums is they'll tell you when you need to replace the consumables, like the brushes, the extractor bar, and also the filter. And it's nice that it tells you how to install the filter and you can always reset it if you like. Okay. So, next we have settings, so the information, you can share the device on multiple smartphones. You also can change the name, uh, you have a do not disturb setting. So if you don't want the indicator or the voice to go off, you do have that option. You also have the volume adjustment. I do like to scare people, so I keep mine at 100%. You also have device light, so if I toggle it, it turns off the two little indicators. You also have carpet mode, so it will boost up its section when it detects carpet. You also have water volume. Um, right now I have it set to low, but you can customize that. And here's the area units, square meters or feet squared. Nice feature. Alright, so one unique feature, kind of like on the Neo D7, is the collision protection mode. So if you enable this, the robot will enter like some furniture if it's a tight area. So this helps prevent dings from your furniture. Also, if you have low hanging uh, bed sheets, the robot won't enter it because it thinks it's a physical barrier. But if you deselect that, the robot will be more aggressive. So if you saw that scenario where the robot was trying to get through the chair legs, I actually had this option disabled to see how aggressive the robot was. And you can see that I was able to get through. But if I enable it, the robot will just think of that as a barrier and won't attempt to try to get through. So that's a nice option if you have delicate furniture. Alright, so you got device info, you can reboot the device, and you can reconnect the device. Okay, so that's just basically everything I have about the app. Yes, there's a lot of features, so go ahead and play around with it. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment down below. Okay, cool. Well, if you're still here, thanks so much for watching till the end. This really helps me out, and there was a lot to cover for the 360S9. To wrap up this video, the 360S9 is a pretty strong competitor with all the high-end smart uh, vacuums out there. The 360S9 has the advanced LiDAR navigation, so it can easily navigate in the dark. Also, it can create a map in one cleaning session, which is something that you can find on most LiDAR robot vacuums. The 360 also has anti-drop sensors, so if it detects a ledge, it will quickly back up and not fall down the stairs. There's about 25 different sensor types on this model, so there's a lot of different snares where the robot vacuum can avoid getting itself trapped or in danger. And you can see with the shoe strings, it's not a problem with the anti-entanglement system. Also, this robot vacuum is no slouch with its 2200 pascals of section, 24 CFM of airflow. Yes, this guy is one of the most powerful robot vacuums I've tested on my channel. And it doesn't stop there. You got about 3 hours of runtime on its low power mode. And you also have the recharge and resume capabilities. So if the roll-up vacuum does have enough charge, or actually go back to stock station, recharge, and then resume where it left off. Okay, I'm pretty sure your head's spinning right now. That's so much information. I do apologize for all that. But in a nutshell, this is one of the best roll-up vacuums today. I'm not just saying that. This 360 model is a really good competitor. Also, I've previously owned a 360 S6, so I do have personal experience using this brand uh, for a long time. I've had the S6 for about four years, so I can attest for the durability and the life of the model. Now, keep in mind that you may have different scenarios and may get lemon where one row of vacuum may not last as long as you thought it would. I did have that problem with the original Roblox S5 where I had a LiDAR sensor go out. So, most of these roll-up vacuums should last a long time, about 4 years, if you take care of them, wipe down the sensors, keep the dustbin clean, and also make sure you change out the filters when they need to be replaced. Okay, so if you like this video, again, I know I keep saying this over and over, please like the video, it really does help rate the video. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. On this channel, I try to showcase these cool roll-up vacuum products or any type of robot that you can buy. Well, for example, I did a uh, telecommunicating robot called Timmy. I also done washing robots, mopping robots, all that cool stuff. Okay, so what do you expect from this channel? Well, there's some great changes happening to Robot Masters. Yes, I now have a dedicated team of five people 
constantly working on helping you improve this channel. They are working on my social media. Yes, eventually I'm going to have Facebook, Instagram, all that cool stuff that you guys like. Also, Robot Masters website www.robottechreviews.com is getting a significant upgrade so the user interface will be better also be a cleaner look and i'm going to provide some unique features that no other robot vacuum channel or i guess manufacturer i don't know what you call it provides so stay tuned for all these exciting features but i won't disclose what my plans are but just keep watching because i plan to make this the best channel possible so have a great rest of your day